The Alpha Sessions. Hello everyone and welcome to The Alpha Sessions. I'm Lucy Rowe. Today we have Erica Jean. Hello. Welcome, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good. Glad to have you here. You played three great songs for us and we've got a lot to talk about. Um, I've been reading up on you. I always like to have a little read up on the history. Um, And I'm particularly interested in your upcoming single Mm -hmm. coming out at the end of April, Chip Pink Fingernails. Yeah. So I'm just going to jump straight in and I'm going to ask you how that song came about and are you excited? Do you know what? Yeah. Are you excited? Yes, I'm so excited. Because this is your debut. Mm Mm-hmm. And you know when you're like, it's not really real yet, and then it's real. And then I clicked the button to actually distribute it, and I was like, whoa, it's gone. That's the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Because you load everything up. Are you one of those people that looks back at all of the details, and you're just like constantly checking if you put everything in right? Yeah. And even when you press the button and you commit, you think, no, something's definitely wrong. Yeah, and I'm like, have I done it right? Have I ticked a box? It's like, maybe it's not going to go to one of the things. But yeah, then I was like, it's gone. (laughs) <laughs> Anything that I've done is too late. <laughs> but you can always go back. You can always, I mean, yeah. edit. But um, yeah, it's it's an exciting thing doing a debut. What made this song the one to be the, the first release for you? I think it was mostly because it feels like such an Erica song. And um, mm. I wanted that to come across in the single as well. So I've got like really weird elements to it. Like I've got these bees that buzz in your ears. And I was like, I just want it to feel like people would listen to it and go, you know Erica definitely made that. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, so it's just like, if it's your first song, I feel like it should be about what you are and who you are as a person. Yeah. And if that's weird and silly, then that should come across in your song. Um, and just being like, here I am, you know, is anyone else like this in the world? Mm. And then just come together. Because that's what really music's about, is just finding your people. And the community. Yeah. yeah. So is that how you describe the Erica Jean sound? Is uh how would you describe it? Bubbly? Well, yeah, bubbly. And also, I had this at one of the gigs. Um, this woman watched me and she was like, Erica, I love your songs because they all sound different, but they all have your personality in mm. them. And I was like, oh, that's perfectly described. I was like, so now I just call it personality music. It's just <laughs> Erica in each song. And I just try and get that across um, as like, yeah, just the quirk. I read somewhere something about glittery pop. Yeah. Something. Is that a phrase you coined? Or is that something Yeah, there's, said there's something I was like, ah. I want glitter in my life and I'm going to put it into my songs. You're wearing glitter today. I am. Well. I love glitter on my eyes. Yeah. And we're pink. We're very pink. And we're the song pink. is pink. We were talking about this earlier. Is that is this the whole theme? Do you know what? Your social media is very pink in it general. Is. Yeah. is that due to pink fingernails or is that just because of... Yeah, it's... <laughs> well, I wear pink all the time. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to carry it on on my socials. Mm. Um... So I just make everything pink. My branding's pink. And then all my posters, I make everything pink. My website's pink. I was like, why not? There's, too much, there's not too much pink in the world. Yeah. So true. Yeah. True. Would you say there's also not enough happy music in the world? Oh, 100%. Is that something you kind of strive? You're trying to fill the world with a bit more... Um, glitter upbeat, and pink. A bit yeah. More glitter. Yeah, because I don't know why people write sad songs. I'm like, we're, we all feel sad sometimes, but if, if we only write sad songs, then we'll never be happy. So I was like, I need, I need to be the one that makes everyone feel happy and make them smile. And yeah, so at a gig the other week, this venue was like, I've never seen so many people in the crowd smile. Mm. And I was like, that's so beautiful. You know, to be that person that brings yeah. the joy into the songs and just having that energy. So yeah, in each of my songs, even if it's about a sad thing, like Chip Pink Fingernails, it's actually about a really sad day and it's about everything going wrong in your life and like I the first lyric I wrote was um I missed the train but it, it used to say while well, the tears fall down my cheeks <laughs> and then I was like nah I can switch this around and then I just mm. wrote about everything that went wrong in my life and then just being like it's okay that's just what happens mm-hmm. and I just call it like the Bridget Jones effect where <laughs> you know it's like maybe maybe everyone has this and we just don't really talk about it so yeah. we're all just a bit weird and do stuff in our lives it's like why yeah. on earth the optimist mm-hmm. the glass half full yeah definitely <laughs> so in terms of tell me more about chipping fingernails in the writing process mm. so you started with that lyric yeah um how do you create something with this in mind how did you create this one i think i just wrote a list of all of the things that i felt um that like went wrong so i'd write like oh yeah my lasagna story down and then i'd write like a list of bullet points and i'd be like that's what I want to talk about, I think. That's, mm. like, my my main focus. And then I went across and made verses, and then and then I found, like, the, the hook. Um, and actually, I wrote it in 2022, mm. and then I was like, I finished it, and I was like, 
I recorded it on my voice notes. So I was like, nah, don't like it anymore. You know, and you've got to the mm-hmm. point where you're like, you finish writing it and you're like, it was good for a minute. Now I've okay. ended it. And then I got the hook stuck in my head um, a year later. And I was like, hmm, let me just go and revisit that song for a minute. And then I went back found the chords again and then I thought I like this song this Mm. feels like the right moment Mm. it's one of those songs that doesn't go away like it's always Mm. in in the background yeah and you keep it in there does that happen to you a lot do you often keep things or do you Mm. you move on oh I'm so I'm such a hoarder Uh it's awful I've got like yeah it's so I write probably like a song or two a day and I've just got a whole list in my notes of I've got like a song's section where mm-hmm. I just put all my lyrics and then I've got voice notes with like all my unfinished ideas or like songs and then I'll come back to them and be like mm, I feel like that's the same vibe mm-hmm. as today you know and you're like yeah I feel like that is that is a funny moment I've got another funny moment to add mm-hmm. to that I can make that into something yeah and just keep that yeah, it's interesting that. some people find it hard I think to come back to things because you change you just develop as a person and then you don't relate to it anymore but I suppose do you find that you do you keep memories rather than rather than very specific notes. Mm. They're more like feelings that you you have that recur. Yeah, and you can go back to them, revisit it's, them. It is like that feeling of that day, and then as soon as you have that like deja vu moment in a way, isn't it? You're like, I swear I felt this when I was writing one of these other songs. Um, mm. But yeah, in the other ways, then you, you just like sometimes there's so many songs, and I wish I could release all of them and play all of them at once. But you're like, maybe playing two hundred songs at a gig <laughs> isn't the best idea. <laughs> Conversations sound better in my head And my outfit looks better laid on my bed My makeup never seems to look quite right But it's okay for the night Things in life, they never go to plan And I could cry about the things I couldn't do Cause I've had the life I did So many things that wouldn't have happened if the clock hadn't a changed its hands. So I dance all night to my feet and I'm gonna sing to the music till my voice is gone. Cause this is the moment life decided to trail. So I smile until my cheeks are burning and I love the way the world is turning. So I wave around my hands and my chip pink fingernails. La da da da. da. The rain poured down around me And on my first day of school I spilled the sand down me And somehow my trousers captured a bee Cause things in life they never go to plan Yeah, so I dance all night to my feet and I'm And I sing to the music till my voice is gone Cause this is the moment life decided to trail So I smile until my cheeks are burning and Love the way the world is turning So I wave around my hands And my chip pink fingernails La da la da da La da la da 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 Chip pink fingernails La da la da da La da la da 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 Chip pink fingernails The Alpha Sessions You've only just moved to London. We were talking about this earlier yeah. in September. Mm-hmm. Um, so where were you originally? Where did I you grow was up? from the Midlands. So, um, yeah, I grew up, like, playing around, busking. And um, then I started, I moved to Birmingham for college. Um, and then I've just moved to London for uni. So it's, like, mm. nice little steps, you know. Yeah. I'm glad I, I was in Birmingham for two years before London because I think it would have been a really big move from, like, the Midlands, that countryside, to just, like, bam, in London. Um but yeah, it's really fun. Mm. I like London. It's similar to Birmingham in a way. Mm-hmm. It's got like the same diversity, the same, like music is kind of the same as well. Yeah. It's very like, you can find your niche really easily in a big city, I feel like, mm. you know. Yeah, you can either get kind of swallowed up because there's so much on offer mm. or you just you sort of dig your cause in and get as much as you can. Um, but in terms of the Midlands music scene, how much of that is up there? Because is that the reason you moved out of the Midlands? Because mu- you just needed more from music or... Did you find that you growing up you were surrounded by music all the time? 
I don't know. I think it's a hard one because I still love the Midlands and I still go back there a lot to play music. But I just think I needed to explore London just to see what's out there. And I think there's a definitely a lot more industry and a lot more opportunities here. Like, ever mm-hmm. since I've moved down here, I'm so much more busy and there's so much more people to meet and so much more musicians. Like, in the Midlands, you can be like, oh, are you from the Midlands? Do you know this person, this person, mm-hmm. this person? And the answer is always yes. <laughs> Whereas in London... Yeah. You don't know everyone, and I think that's the beauty of it, is you meet so many people every day, and, you know, every gig you meet another artist, and you're like, I don't know you, and I've never met you, but then I've got still got mutuals, so there's mm. still a connection. It's a lot smaller, actually, than I thought. Mm-hmm. I thought when I moved to London I'd never meet the same person twice, but like, you end up bumping into them on the tube still, so that's yeah. good. Yeah, true, especially on the Musicians Network, mm. and like the Alpha Sessions Network as well, there's a lot of musicians who do know each other from busking, particularly and like the the London busking circuit is so busy so bustling but you're part of that now as well yeah aren't you how are you finding the London busking it's it's definitely a lot different to Midlands to be fair yeah. with the London buskers people in London are so busy mm-hmm. um but I really like busking in Marble Arch because they've got all the benches there so I didn't know they did busking in Marble Arch yeah I've never seen that there's before. a little spot there oh. that's mine I shouldn't be leaking it yeah. it's mine <laughs> Let's cut that out. <laughs> yeah, but no, um, it's really nice because they have loads of benches there, so it feels like kind of like a gig atmosphere, mm. and people people feel it. And I'm like, sold out gig. Let's go, guys. <laughs> yeah. And there's, there's probably like eight or ten benches on oh, either side, to be fair. Mm-hmm. So and it's nice, nice space. Mm. Um, but yeah, I've not ventured into central busking because I found out that people queue at mm-hmm. like nine a.m. And I was yeah. like, Whoa. There's a slot on Leicester Square that I always, if I walk by, you can see people just sitting with their instruments um, all day long. They just wait there yeah. for like an hour slot and then they move on. Mm-hmm. But I suppose it is because they're buzzing. There's hundreds of people passing every minute. Yeah. Um, but in terms of busking in Birmingham, did you do a lot of that when you were up there? For yeah. College? And I did is that bit. more similar than it is in the Midlands? I'm assuming. Yeah. Birmingham is quite similar, like where it's quite busy. But do you get more people stopping? listening yeah you get more you can like form a crowd more easily mm. in Birmingham because I think it's more rare as well for busking whereas in London I think there's definitely more buskers um like Birmingham as well I think they were trying to cancel busking at one point Comple- because- how can you completely cancel busking? I know they were like that's nah, too much noise so I don't know but yeah wow. so it's still quite new to the Midlands like they're still a bit like do we do we or don't we busk mm. but yeah, in the, in London it's a lot more mm. busy. But then I don't know because people in Birmingham are a lot kinder. Like people give me Greg sausage rolls and stuff all the time. I heard this. I saw you were talking on Five Live. Yeah, already, and they were talking about sausage rolls. Yeah. When I saw that, I think it was in a caption or something, and I was like, <laughs> "What is this about?" And I had to delve in. Um, how did you get into that as well, Five Live? Um, they found me through introducing, I think, mm-hmm. because they knew that I was a busker, so they wanted to talk about like whether busking should or shouldn't be a thing oh, wow. and so I was like yeah it should be a thing I'll talk about it with you yeah. um, and we had Keep Streets Live as well which is a great connection in Birmingham they're a great platform which will talk about buskers mm-hmm. yeah so that was a really fun like discussion and everything yeah but yeah and I even got a free electric guitar once which was really sick what? yeah and just buy a, a passerby you just leave it there this you? guy was like <laughs> um, I'm moving and I need I've got like six guitars and I need to get rid of them by next wow. week and he was like do you want one I was like, imagine, yeah. imagine saying no, 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 thanks. That's kind, yeah. but no. He was like, no. I don't have it with me. I've got to go. Like, you've got to come to my flat. So I was like, I'm gonna get my dad to do that, obviously. And he came back, and I was like, this can't be real. Yeah, free guitar. Wow. And you still have that now. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. gonna be a story one day, and they'll yeah. pop up. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be a moment. Um, so okay, moving on to more radio stuff. So mm-hmm. you've done introducing. Um, and you've been performing. Is this your first kind of independent radio? Do you yeah. do mainly BBC? Oh. I think it is. I think it's definitely my first um, live performance on radio as well, which is really cool. Yeah. Mm. Debut. Yeah. We love, we love an exclusive. Um, did you not do an introducing session? They do those sometimes. No, they I haven't do done chats. one yet. Yeah, just chat. Mm. They love me for the chat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're losing introducing, though. We're losing a lot of community radio, mm. as well as busking. It seems like everything's being pushed gently out for this certain yeah. level of independent musicians. Yeah. It's just being sort of pushed down Uh Um, but I guess London is good for that as well Mm. do you find there's more opportunities in just the busking's more um, accepted or and the radio's bigger and I don't know I think I have only been here since September so it's hard to like Mm. you know really compare the two yet but I think I don't know I think there's definitely a more but then I don't know because back in the Midlands there's also a lot of independent scenes 
Um, and a lot of people want independent music in mm. the Midlands, I feel like, you know, because there's so much um, independent music there. Because mm. in London, you've got obviously like the O2s and the big stadiums. So maybe people go to bigger concerts in London. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But in, in the Midlands, we've only got like the O2s. And even the O2s are like mostly the indie or like the semi-mainstream artists that go on tour but we don't have like Ed Sheeran mm. I don't think Ed Sheeran's ever touched like foot in well to be fair he did actually he was like around from from the Midlands so big up the Midlands well, there you go. but yeah big up Ed <laughs> shout out um, but th I mean there's not l a lack of opportunities yeah. it seems from the Midlands because you've done so much and I mean mm. that's not to say that you haven't gone out and got it but I saw things about Tom O'Dell singing in his choir yeah um, and supporting you supported some good artists um, touring as well so how did you yeah. come about starting with Tom O'Dell how did that begin um that was through my London uni actually oh. so my friend um in my class was like I've got this opportunity um to sing with Tom O'Dell do you want to do it and I was like are you joking wow. me yeah and um so he was part of like a choir when he was in um, his high school I think yeah mm. so then he then asked me, he was like, we need more vocalists for, like, female vocalists. And I was like, yeah, I'd so be down. So we learnt the songs. And it was before the songs had come out, which is mm. so weird. I think Black Friday had just come out, but it was still quite new. I think it had been out, like, two weeks. Mm. Um, and then we had to listen to it and learn, like, the different parts. And actually, I learnt the alto part. And then the day of, like, an hour before, they were like, actually, we, we need one more soprano. And no one else put their hand up apart from me. So I was like, oh, I thought this was going to be a communal thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, I guess I'm learning the parts. So I had to learn, relearn the two songs again with a wow. different arrangement. And I had an hour and it was so much stress. And then I, they put me front row because I'm a small girl. <laughs> and I was standing right next to Tom Adele. Wow. And I was there like, okay, breathe out. Okay, it's totally fine. Yeah. You've totally got this. And he was the most nicest guy, actually. I was I hoped I hoped he would be. Cause yeah. he seems really sweet. Yeah, and he was so lovely, and he shook everyone's hand before we sang with him, and he was like, "I really want to get to know you all. Like, thank mm. you. You're so much as your stage as it is so much my stage." And he was just the humblest guy, and I was like, "This is the mm. most perfect day," and they gave us croissants and like lunch. Well, and you can't beat that. You yeah, get a free croissant. I was like, "Food is <laughs> always." <anything>. Yeah. <laughs> So, but yeah, it was really weird as well because um, I chatted to him and said, um, it's like a full circle moment because the first ever performance that I did was the same festival as Tom Adele. So it was back in 2019 mm -hmm. and um, it was at the big festival and I did like a big festival with Scott Talent mm -hmm. and I was playing mm -hmm. on like a indie stage to like win, I don't know, I think... It was called Big Festivals Got Talent. <laughs> and um, I was there with my little ukulele and like singing Riptide classic. And then um, I got scouted to play at Carfest the year after. And that's when my whole career just started. And ever since then, that's where I just was like, oh, I can perform. It's real. Mm. Um, before then, I just thought it was like a foreign concept that only like performers perform and other people don't perform. Yeah. And then, yeah, so that was the same festival as Tom Adele. And then all these years later, I'm now meant to be. performing with, and I was like, well, I have to tell Tom this, and he was like, that's amazing. Would you like to be my hillside lover, my hillside lover? Would you like to see what hillside love on a hillside love? Give you all my dreaming Let us float away into this view You give all this world another meaning Sitting on a hillside with you Would you like to be My hillside lover, my hillside lover Would you like to see What hillside love on a hillside love Butterflies chase through the breeze Falling on a hillside with you Scared to look in your eyes Hoping you feel the same And then to your surprise I asked you Would you like to be My hillside lover, my hillside lover would you like 
Alpha sessions. Are you a big proponent of festivals? Yeah. Do you love a festival? I, I, I can see festivals. you love festivals. Yeah, festivals are the highlight of my year. Yeah. I can't wait to like defrost into summer. I think I've already done one festival this year, and it was it was so funny. I think it was like March, April, and I was like, I love it. We're already in the festival season, mm. and um, it was at this place called Camper Jam, and um, mm-hmm. was it Camper Calling? One of the two. There's like, I'm playing at one, no, it was Camper Calling because Camper Jam is in summer. They're the same, like, chain, but right. then they have different things. And there's um, a whole thing with VWs, <laughs> and they had this VW there, and it had Scooby-Doo on the on the van. Oh, like a proper mystery machine. Like, oh, this is sick. Because the whole time I was like, oh, this one looks like a Scooby-Doo van, but it wasn't. And then I was like, this one looks like a Scooby-Doo van, and it was. And then I found one, and I was like, oh, Scooby-Doo? And that was the highlight of your year so far. Yeah. <laughs> and I got a picture of the Scooby-Doo van. <laughs> New single coming out, Play With Tom O'Dell, but Scooby-Doo van, Yeah. <laughs> on the other hand. Yeah. Um, how do you find getting into festivals? A lot of people really struggle, because um, obviously there's hundreds of people applying, mm. even for these very independent ones. Is it something that you've just got a knack for, and that you've got used to, or you've got a network for, or how do you get yourself into them? I think, yeah, it's definitely, it's so hard to get into festivals, especially like the bigger ones, to break that, like middle to high ground is so hard and so many emails just get lost you know and all the applications every year I've got like a notes page on my phone of like festivals 2024 and then I just go through them all and tick them off and try and apply but yeah there's so many artists that apply for each one and then as soon as you get a yes you're like no way this is Mm. crazy you applied to me um I definitely think I don't know why but yeah, festivals are really hard to get into. Mm. And I think once you then play one festival, it just kind of stems from there because then other festivals go to festivals, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Like, on their time off, they're like, well, I still love festivals, so I'm going to go watch yeah. other artists and get them to play at my festivals. Um, and then it just always stems. But finding that first festival is, yeah, it's really hard. And I feel really sorry for all the artists mm-hmm. that have to... Like constantly, I was saying about this the other day as well with my friend. He was like, I think I've got like four yeses in like a whole list of yeah. emails. And it's heartbreaking because you're like, but I just want to be in the field with you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. I, I do understand. But at the same time, when you get that gateway, it, it does just sort of lead to so many more opportunities. Yeah. Um, when you play festivals and busking as well, do you play a lot of your original stuff? Yeah. Because um, some people, you say, stick to covers because they know that's what the audience likes. But mm. actually, I imagine... The reason festivals will work really well with you is because your music does just like have that atmosphere of people will get involved and you, that's the kind of summer happiness that yeah. you need in a festival. But uh, yeah, so you, I guess you do play originals. Yeah, I mostly play originals. I might throw in a few covers, mm. but I mostly play, it depends on how long the set is as well. Um, but most of the time, you know, I think ditch the covers. Mm-hmm. But I do, yeah, I understand a lot of people play covers for the vibes and stuff. Yeah. The, the second song you played, um, I would like to talk about Hillside Lover. Mm. Um, that's it's still again, like you said, it's got your print on it. It's got your um, vibe, mm. um, but it is different. It's definitely a lot different to pick chip fingernails. Um, so how is that one? How's that one come about? Is that one unreleased? Going to be released? It's about to be released in oh. May. I think. Oh wow! So yeah, it's going to be on my upcoming EP, um, and it's yeah, it came about because. Actually, it came about because I was studying media in college. And this is such a weird story. And um, I was like, how cool would an album be? I was creating a fake account for a music account. So, like, in our media, we had to create um, a music video and then, like, create a fake artist account and social media and stuff. So I created this whole account um, with my friends and um, I, like, had them film the music video and everything and I was like okay I've got to come up with names and I've got to come up with an album title for this fake release that's coming out and I was like how cool would it be to have an album called Hillside Lover mm. or Love on the Hillside or something about that and then and then I thought about it I was like maybe I could write a song even if it doesn't go on the mm. actual fake account and so I wrote the song called Hillside Lover and it just came about because I was like I think it would be a cool name and then um, yeah it was basically based on all the Midlands and like growing up around the hills and just like 
how nice it is to just sit with someone. It doesn't even have to be like someone that you're in love with, just like your friends mm-hmm. and just relaxing on a summer's day and being That's like, nice. yeah, would you like to be my hillside lover? And then mm-hmm. they're like, maybe. <laughs> it's a lot folkier in a way. Yeah. It kind of, it's more relaxed, but it's still got that kind of um, calmness to it that mm-hmm. makes you feel very happy. So I imagine it will go down very well at festivals this year. Um, so you mentioned an EP there. I didn't yeah. know there was an EP. Is that a secret bit of information mm, that you just it is, Yeah. <laughs> so it's coming out in probably like September time. Oh, amazing. Um, so I've got a few few songs on that, which I think it's got like six. People are like, isn't that basically an album? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> it's getting there. I don't know. I Googled like, what is an album compared to an EP? <laughs> and I was like, I don't think it is. I think it's going to be like half an hour. Yeah. Um, so I think, I don't know. The answer will come out when I decide how long the songs are, and then I'll be mm. like, okay, Googling again. So it's still in the works, it's not entirely. Yeah, so I'm recording yet. it at the moment. Um, nice. And then it's really exciting. But yeah, and I've just got into producing as well. Mm. I was going to ask you about that. Do you mm. produce, do you self produce? Do you create everything, or do you have a team? With I you? have a team, um, but I'm just starting to like discover that I actually do have quite a good production ear. And I was like, oh maybe this could be something. Erica Jean slash producer. Erica Jean. Erica Jean. The producer. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think we need more female producers anyway, because yeah. they are out there, but they're just not notable, yeah. and, which is a whole other big issue. Um, so track list is undecided on the EP. Mm-hmm. Any title for the EP? Potentially. Is Potentially. that still secret? Yeah, secret it's information. Secret. Okay, well, we don't can, want to give it away. Yeah, we'll keep, we don't want to have too many exclusives, don't want to go too crazy. Yeah. Um, and the last song you played as well, it gave me the same kind of vibe, but sort of a little bit moodier, actually, mm. um, in the harmony, I yeah. felt, and it's folkier again. Where Because that influence feels very different. What are your kind of influences when you songwrite? It's a very good question, because I actually think it just comes from somewhere I don't know where from. Mm. And that sounds crazy, but I actually don't listen to a lot of music, mm. which people find hard to believe. Um, like, I listen to, like, funk and stuff. Like, my shower playlist is very weird. It's, like, just like, yeah, you know. But actually, in terms of influences, I think it just comes from where I want to feel. Like, I mm. think a lot of it is live. I think that's why. Like, in terms of big artists, I say, like, Joni Mitchell and, like, Eva Casti and that kind of thing. But that's mostly because people think that I sound like them. Mm -hmm. So it came from before that. Um, Maybe it's, like, a subliminal thing where you're Mm. growing up and a lot of that influence from whatever your parents listen to. Mm. Um, But, yeah, I think I just watch a lot of live music and, you know, whatever I discover, I'm like, I like that guitar sound, that sounds Mm. fun. Um, But, yeah, Evergreen came... Across, I wrote it by ear, so I, don't ask me what the chords are because I would not know. <laughs> I know a few of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I just wrote it. I remember I was, for some reason, I was looking at a box of celebrations. Nice. I don't know why. No, and you don't have to have a reason. Sometimes yeah. you just do. And I don't know how that became the song, but <laughs> I just remember sitting on my floor looking, it must have been after Christmas, and just yeah. looking at a box of celebrations like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like a, compl- a different personality entirely? Like you switch off. And it's like a, um, a different part of your brain entirely. Yeah, it's almost like a dream. Yeah. Mm. yeah, like it's, a dream state. It's like a dream state where yeah. you just go, right. Especially like the first though, because it's like rolling over clouds. I think I was literally like, just switch off and relax and mm. just create something. Um, which is really weird, actually. I was looking through my camera roll because I was trying to find like the sing- single cover. And um, I was looking through my camera roll and two months before I wrote the song, there's a picture of me holding an evergreen leaf. Mm. And I did not write the song with that in mind, mm. but subliminally I must have had this evergreen mm. leaf in my brain and I wrote the song yeah. about it, um, which I found really weird. So then I used that as the album cover. I was like, well, it must oh, have lovely. come from something. Yeah, so you just sort of you float through life, pick up these little gems, but you don't think anything of them, and then they all stay in there, yeah. and then you've got your big voice notes, yeah. and everything just comes together. It just It just moulds. It just happens. Yeah. Well, we look forward to everything that's coming this year. It feels like it's going to be a big year. Lots of exciting things. If everyone wants to find you on your social medias mm-hmm. and everything, what should they search for? They can find me at Erica Jean Music. So Erica Like America and Jean Set the Clothes. Erica Jean. Well, thank you for coming on the Alpha Sessions. We look forward to Chip Pink Fingernails coming on the 26th yeah. of April. Mm-hmm. And um, whatever else you've got coming out this year. Thank you so much. Thank you.
floating overseas. You were there with me in all my wildest dreams. Waking up my world one step at a time. You were butterfly and I was bee. When we sailed away. Says grow old, but that's where I see us through the looking glass. I hope what I find is to see you smile for evergreen. When we sailed away. You could cry on my shoulder, and I felt I could sleep in your arms. And we kissed and we danced in the